Joining us this evening in studio is the Managing Director of NSSF, Mr. Patrick Ayota. Good evening and welcome to Good NTV evening. tonight. Thank you very much. Um, the stories that we have just watched touch on a few things that were mentioned earlier on in the day, right here at Kampala Serena Conference Center, but a few things that you mentioned that we just want to expound on. Mm -hmm. The first one is the mem membership contribution. You said yes. for the year 2022-2023, mm -hmm. there was an increase, and in particular it increased by 15.4%. So from the year before, it was 1.49 trillion in that financial year 2021-2022. Yeah. And for this particular financial year just ended, it was 1.72 trillion. Correct. One would want to know, despite the challenges, many that have been spoken mm. about external and internal, mm. where exactly did we yeah. see this membership contribution come in and in such an, a big amount? If you, they actually came from two main sources. One, if you remember during, in January 2022, the law was amended and mm -hmm. the threshold was dropped. We even went out in the press, we actually did a campaign, if you're in the midst of the trial, and told members, please, send in your contribution because you're violating the law. So we have about 2,600 companies that began to contribute that were not doing that before. Number two, when you look at the old companies, the compliance rates increased from 52% to 57%. That again was because we went out and were telling people that actually need to contribute. Part of the forces come from members. Members actually begin to realize that what they have in SF is their asset. So really, really, they begin to pay attention that if they don't get that message every month that you've, you've received your money, they go back to the employer and say, hey, what happened to my money? Yeah. So we're seeing employers, the convergence of that, beginning to force their the employees begin to force their employers to make sure that they remit their money in that case. Mm. And I think that comes from awareness that we've actually had over the time. Okay, and does that continue to touch on something that even the Honorable Minister of Gender mentioned, which was a need for sensitization yes. across the country? Because yes. we might say the fund has been around for a mm. while, but what is it that every Ugandan is not very aware of? Some are slowly yes. getting aware of how yes. important it is to save, yes. but when you have these conversations with Ugandans, yes. What is it that's lacking? Is it the company's laxity? Is it company's laxity? And then for the longest time, uh, most of the companies cheat the employer by telling them, "Uh, uh you'll keep more money." You uh, don't, don't bother with the NSSF. But what the company is actually telling the employee is that, guess what? We don't want to put the ten percent for you. What you've had us do now over the last three months, we've had we now begin to leverage different partnerships that we can create. Mm. Over the last three months, we had an amazing, uh, basically, workshop, sensitization, with the means of works, specifically the road sector. There were like 500 subcontractors with the road sector who attended. And the UNRWA decided that if a subcontractor does not have an NSF carrier certificate, their license will not be renewed. That has happened with the oil sector, that has now had with the ICT. We're now going to go through the various MDAs so that we can bring that sensitization together. And we go across. We, see we, we were in Northern Uganda, we were in uh, sensitizing RDCs, lab officers, uh, cows across. And we did that across the country. Yeah. The more we do that, the more we create, create that awareness okay. among our members. You earlier just mentioned about the compliance bit from yes. companies. Mm. It did rise up from Correct. 52 to 55, 57%. Uh, 57 percent, but that increment still leaves 43% uh -huh. behind. Yes. And that's a huge number. Yes. Because as a fan, one would ask, why can't we get the 90%? Part of it is the way we compute our compliance. The way we compute our compliance, if you notice, we have about 88,000 companies registered with us. Out of, 40, out of that, about 45,000 are considered to be active. Now, active for us, compliance means that you paid on time mm -hmm. the right amount. By the 15th of the month, you paid the right amount and on time. Mm -hmm. If you pay less than what you should have paid, if you pay beyond the 15th, you're not compliant. So that's why that number is actually quite tight. Mm -hmm. And that's a discipline we want our members to have. And we encourage them that please do the self-reporting, come and we talk. We'll understand when you have issues, but you have to do that. Because on the other hand, we use the carrot and stick. We are not, it's not in our interest to close down a company. We cause more, prob more social security problems mm. by closing a company. But we want companies to comply and we'll work with them 
to make sure they do. But that gap will close this slowly by slowly. Okay. Now, taking a look at those savings, as many are celebrating the 10% yes. that uh, the message might have come for some, the message is still on its right. way. Um, the, as the, the minister did mention, yeah. she said that less than 5% uh, mm -hmm. are over 100 million when it comes to servers within the fund. That leaves a huge number, yes. a majority of the number, exactly. having an amount in savings that exactly. can barely have them afford some of the housing projects exactly. within the fund. Mm. We'll just go case in point to the Solana housing project. <laughs> <laughs> you laugh as I say it, but it's one of those that uh, yeah. when it was launched in September 2022, yes. many were saying, but we can barely afford it. Yes. Who is this for? Yes. 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 We want the money that uh, we're seeing being invested. Mm -hmm. Also something that we can actually be okay. able to afford. The good news is actually what we've done is we've had a number of products, housing products that are on the market now, catering to the various segments of our members. Markets. I'll give you a couple that are coming up. In addition to Solana, Temangalo. We've got about 500 houses that are coming up in Temangalo. They should be, I think by the end of next year, they will be ready. We believe the lawyer's house is looking at 90 million shillings. Now, 90 million shillings is still very expensive for most Ugandans. Mm -hmm. But that's going to be true for everything. What we are trying to do now with the government is engage them. Any country, any state that wants to deliver what you call low cost or affordable housing, there has to be a partnership with the state. I'll give you two examples. Right now, for each house to deliver, 18% of that price is VAT, mm. which is a tax. About 20 to 30% of that is infrastructure that the developer has to put in. Just between those two, that's 50%. Yeah. In other words, we're saying that if we had joined with the government, or the government had joined with us mm. in Temangalo, maybe that price of the house would be around 60 million shillings, mm. not 90. That's a partnership we're engaging the government with, so that together we can deliver more for both okay. Now, lastly, on the sidelines of the, of the meeting, mm -hmm. he did speak to one of our reporters. We'd like to just watch this clip and yeah. get back to you. Okay, thank you. What about the unclaimed um, savings funds at NSSF? What percentage are we talking about here? Uh -huh. people, get, people get hung of that. The number is 0.03% of the fund. And it is because even the law made a provision that there may be moments when people send you money, employers will send you money without the details of their employees. What the law has prescribed is how you handle those monies. You look, search, if you try all your best, you put it in a reserve and you wait. 20 years from now, the grandchild may show up and say, my grandfather worked in such and such a place, they produce their documentation, we get to transfer that money out of them. So it's a very, very small part of the fund. This very small part of the mm. fund that you mm. talk about, the 0.003% mm. is mm. what the fund is calling the unidentified money. Some Correct. are calling the unclaimed money. Unidentified. Now this unidentified money, how does the fund end up with unidentified money and okay. what is the monetary value of okay. this 0.003%? Zero zero zero. Zero okay. The number goes up and down, but there is a core, there is a core amount that has been there for almost 15 years. And I'll tell you what happened. Back when privatization was being undertaken, a number of companies, they closed. So the government went in to do an audit. They found a line in their general ledger of a company that had been closed, payable to NSSF. They wrote a check, sent it to us, without the details of any member. member. We've actually, there are times when we, there's a year we actually went to the warehouses and went through boxes and boxes and boxes. We were able to identify some, we we're not able to identify some. We did. So we make every effort to do that. Now, the quantum of the number as of the end of June 2023, that number was 58 billion shillings. However, most of it had come in June. Before the end of the, uh, before the, the money came for the end of June, but the list came after June had passed. Mm -hmm. so about 20 billion shillings of that we cleared. So the true amount coming from through was about 39 billion shillings. Mm -hmm. And that's when you look at that's about 0.003 percent. The shilling amount is big, but when you compare to the other pension funds, 
we are dialing and the envy of many. Because that means 99.98% of all the money we receive from our members are actually in their accounts. The good thing is I found you can never lose that money. It will always be there. We even put interest. When we declare 10%, put 10% on that money. Just in case, like I said, 30 years from now, a grandchild shows up, we'll give them that money. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Patrick Ayota, for Thank joining you. us on NTV tonight. We're still having a conversation about the 11th um, annual meeting. Of